Alex, where are you? Me and our son have been waiting for you for hours at the hospital. You said you went out for some fresh air and you would be back in a few minutes. What's wrong, honey? I'm very concerned. What's wrong? You still have the nerve to ask me that stupid question and don't even call him my son. He's no son to me. He's been cursed with Down syndrome and he will never be normal like other kids. Honestly, he shouldn't have been born at all. Alex, what happened? Just a few hours ago, you were encouraging me to be strong so we could get through this tough time together. You said that having Down syndrome doesn't define our son, that he'll grow up as bright as any other kid. But now you're saying the opposite. What changed? Well, I said those things because I didn't want to make a fuzz at the hospital, okay? Just consider you never heard of what I said earlier because it's all lies. I mean, think rationally. He literally has no future and he would become nothing but a burden for us and for society. What are you talking about, Alex? I know that having a kid with Down syndrome is not easy for any parent, but it's simply not fair to say that he has literally no future. People with Down syndrome can live full and productive lives. They can go to school, get jobs, and have families. They can contribute to society in many ways, and our son makes no exception. Enough! I don't want to waste my time hearing your lecture. Gosh, my mom was totally right. I should have forced you to abort that child as soon as I found out you were pregnant. She already saw through how incompetent you are as a woman and women like you can only bear useless children. You and your son are a disgrace to me and my family. Why are you like this, Alex? Please stop saying those things to me because your words cut through me like a sharp knife. I just gave birth to our son and my body is extremely exhausted. I would literally crumble if you keep talking like this. Honestly, I never thought you were this kind of person. You really disappointed me. Me? Disappointed you? More like the other way around. You can't even fulfill the simplest duty of a woman, which is to give birth to a healthy child. You should feel ashamed for claiming yourself my wife. So you're just going to abandon us here and leave our fate to chance? How could you do that after four years we've been together and after everything I've done to build our family? What have you ever done that's so big of a deal? Cleaning some insignificant dishes or doing some mindless laundry? Honestly, after four failing to give me a healthy child, your role in the house is no better than a servant. Don't even think that I'll come and pick you up from the hospital. That's never gonna happen. Not in a million years. You have arms, legs, and a brain. Use them to get back home by yourself. I can't believe you're this cruel and ungrateful to me. You're the one who convinced me to quit my job and bear your child. You said that I didn't have to lift a finger because you would take care of everything. So you're just gonna swallow your own words like that, huh? It was long before I knew that our son is not normal. Had I known that you would be giving birth to a cognitively impaired child, I wouldn't have married you in the first place, let alone provided you with full financial support like I'm currently doing. Anyways, for the sake of our marriage, I'm gonna give you this one chance to redeem yourself. A chance to redeem myself? What are you even talking about? I haven't done anything wrong, and I'm proud of bringing Sebastian to life. I see that you've already named him Sebastian, huh? If I were you, I wouldn't bother giving him a proper name. It won't do any good other than making you grow more attached to him. Look, the only thing that you can do to save this marriage is to get rid of the child. Only then I'll be able to forgive your sin. Get rid of our son? What are you even saying? Are you human anymore? Okay, I'm gonna pretend that I didn't hear what you just said because it's the most dreadful thing that's ever come to my ears. Oh, come on now, Mia. Don't act like a hypocrite. I know deep down you don't even want this kid to appear in your life, right? Please don't try to lie to yourself to make you a saint in everyone's eyes. Well, to be honest, I didn't expect that our child would be born with a genetic condition, but... No but. Think about your expectations, about what you wanted our kid to become before he was born. You said that you want our child to be successful, whether as a lawyer like me, a nurse like you, or anything else they want to be. You also want them to meet and marry a beautiful girl who will give them a beautiful child to carry on our family lineage, correct? Do you seriously think this child has the potential to live up to our expectations? Of course he can, and he will, with patience and perseverance. I am confident that our son will achieve great things, just like everyone else. In fact, aren't our child's happiness and well-being the most important things? Why do we feel the need to force our son to live up to our expectations? Gosh, you make me feel like I've been talking to a brick wall. I've tried my best to explain what I need you to do, but clearly, 
you refuse to listen. Alex, I've made up my mind. I'm keeping our son. And don't even try to talk me out of it. Even though Sebastian is just a newborn, I already feel a deep connection with him. I will follow my maternal instincts and do whatever it takes to be with my son. Jeez, fine, fine. Whatever you say, but don't expect me to be there and pick you guys up. Just catch a taxi or something to come back home. So you agree to let Sebastian stay with us? <sighs> Thank you, darling. I knew that you still have a heart. Don't worry, my dear. I'll find a way to get us home as quickly as possible. You know what? Sebastian is really, really excited to meet his dad already. Hey, Alex, I just got home, but could you please explain why my belongings are piled up on the floor? I'm not sure what's going on. You've already got home, huh? I didn't think that you'd be home so quickly. Um, yeah, I just spent yesterday getting some rest. You weren't there with me, so I had to take care of myself and our baby. But I don't blame you. I know it's a lot of things to process, especially with our son's condition. Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, but don't be too concerned because the nurses were very helpful. They helped me breastfeed Sebastian, taught me how to change the diapers and bathe our baby. They also checked his temperature, heart rate, and breathing. I was so clumsy at breastfeeding our son at first, but got used to it afterwards. I know it's early days, but I'm already so in love with being a parent. Good to know. What's wrong, Alex? Aren't you excited? But why aren't you home to welcome me and Sebastian? And you haven't answered my last question. Why are my belongings all over the place? Is everything okay? Goodness sakes, Mia. Why do I always have to lay it all out on the table for you? It's already over between us right after the moment you gave birth to a child with down syndrome i gave you a chance i told you to abandon the kid so that we can come back together but you refuse to take that chance you leave me no choice but to force you to move out of my house <laughs> what so you're kicking me out of the house what is this all about where are you now come back home this instant and talk to me face to face we're not kids anymore it's not fair to kick me out of the house by text and then hide like a coward look i was being very kind and patient for giving you time to pack your things and get out of the house now this is what you have to say to express your gratitude i really should have just thrown your stuff into the dumpster where it belongs it's not like you would have even noticed. You think that I'm hiding like a coward? On the contrary, I just want to spare you a dramatic confrontation where you'll be the one who takes a bigger hit. Oh, so now you're saying that I have to thank you for dumping me? Remember, we're still husband and wife. You can't do this to me. Husband and wife? Don't make me laugh. Have you checked the dinner table? It's where I left the divorce papers. Look, I don't want to see your face any longer. So please, just sign the documents, bring along your garbage, and get lost. Divorce? So you really determined to abandon me because of our son's disability? You're truly a cold-hearted person, Alex. I can't believe you're the one who I was considering my husband this whole time. Well, thank you for finally getting a hold on the situation. I'm sure it took you a while to figure out what to do. But I'm glad you eventually came to your senses. Text me when you're done cleaning up your mess in my house. Take all the time you want and don't rush. After all, you need to gone on this pain and humiliation. <laughs> you, you're intolerable, Alex. Mark my words, you will have to pay for your cruelty and it'll be a heavy price. Yeah, you can try to scare me all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that you're leaving my house today and our marital ties will soon be severed. Oh, and by the way, I don't think you should waste your time going to court because you're not gonna get a single penny from me. You came with nothing and you will leave with nothing. However, I'll still send you some pity money every month for taking care of Sebastian or whatever you call that boy. Hey Mia, did you receive the money I sent for this month? I can only imagine how desperate you must have been. Desperately praying for that meager amount. Pathetic, really. Yeah, I did receive. But don't expect me to thank you for that. It's your duty to take care of your own son, you know? On the other hand, don't make it seem like we would die of hunger without your help. We'll still be well and alive even if you choose to stop providing us financially. How many times have I told you, don't call him my son. He's nothing but a disgrace that I wish I could forget about. Anyways, that sum of money is all you can get, so don't even dare to ask for more. In fact, what on earth do a single mom and a retarded boy ever need money for? <laughs> 
keep those insults to yourself and start treating us with respect. Sebastian may have an intellectual disability, but I can say with certainty that he's 100 times better than you as a human being. As Sebastian grows up, I'll teach him to be kind, compassionate, and loving, as opposed to his cruel, insensitive, and hateful father. On second thought, you don't even deserve to be called his dad. Yeah, yeah, whatever. In fact, I can't wait to see him grown up and become a complete loser like he's destined to be. I'm just dying to know where on earth are you guys slumming it these days? Please, don't tell me it's some charming little hotel on the verge of collapsing. Me and Sebastian are living with my parents, so thank you for asking. And why do you even want to know about that? Well, I'm just asking. Don't be so triggered by a simple question. And what do you do to get by every day? If I'm not wrong, you're just leeching off your dear parents like a parasite, correct? I was recently rehired at the hospital where I used to work, so I'm now back to being a nurse. Nursing isn't a high-paying job, but I'm more than proud to say that this job allows me to live a financially independent life. Yeah, a poor life, in other words. I don't even have to ask you to know how badly you want to go back to the old days when you could blissfully squander my hard-earned money on extravagant luxuries without batting an eyelash. Sorry to say this, but that way of living now belongs to someone else. What are you trying to say? It's straight to the point. Isn't it clear what I just said? Gosh, Mia, your ability to read between the lines hasn't improved a single bit since the last time I abandoned you. What I meant was, I already found myself a perfect girl who's worthy of enjoying the lavish lifestyle that you failed to keep. What? It's only been five months since we got divorced and you've already found another girl? What kind of man are you? And what holds me back from finding a gorgeous girl? and enjoy my new chapter in life with her. I mean, well-off and talented young man like me can get myself hot chicks anytime I want. <laughs> You're rotten to the core, Alex. But not just any random pretty girl like you, but a girl who's able to bear my beautiful, healthy, and intelligent kids. And her name is Sadie. In fact, she's already pregnant with my child, and I can't wait until the day my little angel is born. It will undoubtedly be the best day of my life. Yeah, right. But you know what they say, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Honestly, I don't wish anything bad upon your child, but if something actually went wrong, please be a reasonable dad this time around, okay? What bad thing could possibly happen to my little angel? I've been closely monitoring my child's ultrasound tests, and the doctor has assured me that they are completely healthy, so don't you dare wish ill on my kid. But to think about it, your mean words only show how pathetic you are. <laughs> you must be beating yourself up when thinking about losing me, am I correct? Why should I be? In fact, I am so happy to be rid of a self-absorbed and heartless person like you that I sometimes have to pinch myself to make sure I'm not dreaming. But you know what, Mia? What you were saying actually makes sense. The future is full of mystery and we can never know what's gonna come next. I learned that valuable lesson after what happened between us. That's why I already spared me a way out in case Sandy couldn't give me the child of my dream. What way out? You really disgust me, Alex. How could you even think of plotting against your own wife? Wife? She's no wife to me. Let me further explain it so a fool like you can keep up. So instead of rushing into marriage with her as I did with you, I chose to not make any commitment to her at all. In fact, the only thing I've ever promised is to give her as much money as she wants. I'll consider marrying her only after she gives birth to my child, and the child is confirmed to be free of any genetic disorders or birth defects. <laughs> you clearly aren't aware of how despicable you are. Me? Why should I be called despicable when the only thing I'm doing is protecting myself? Anyways, you'll be hearing good news from me soon enough. Hey Mia, did you enjoy my wedding with Sadie yesterday? I know I invited you, but I didn't expect you to actually show up. Well, I didn't want to come, but Sebastian seems to be excited about the prospect of attending because he wanted to see you, so I had no other choice. Letting him down is the last thing I want to do. Well, based on how he behaved at the wedding, he seems like a decent boy, not gonna lie. I gotta give you credit for raising him well. Yeah, thanks. It's actually a good thing that his biological dad is not around. But Sebastian is nothing compared 
to Mike Connor. He was born completely healthy and beautiful. I hope he has my blue eyes and charming smile, because it will surely be lady killer features. <laughs> yeah, for you it's all about the appearance and nothing else. You're just as superficial as I always thought of you. I don't want to say this out loud, but you deserve to be cheated on after all. Cheated on? What are you saying? Don't just shoot from the hip out of your anger with me. I know you're jealous, but at least find a way to hide it, okay? Yeah, I knew from the very beginning that you wouldn't believe what I had to say. But suit yourself. After all, you deserted your own wife and son. So why should I bother having any sympathy for you? I imagine it can be rewarding to raise a child who is not your own. What are you implying? Mia, spit it out. I don't have time to listen to your nonsense all day. Oh, I'm surprised that you're being so impatient. I thought you were good at playing with words. Are you suggesting that Sadie had an affair and that the child is not my biological son? Bingo! You got that right. What? How, how could it be? Wait, you're just trying to sabotage my marriage with Sadie out of spite. No way I'm going to fall for your lowly trap. I see that you're picking up on my tricks. Good girl. I'm so proud of you, Mia. Yeah, yeah, mock me as much as you want, but it doesn't change the fact that the child is not yours. Look, I work at the hospital where Sadie, your wife, goes for her prenatal ultrasounds, and I've seen her on several occasions with another man. They always behave very intimately, and I'm not even exaggerating when I say that she's cheating on you, Alex. What? Don't you dare try to fool me. I know you're a chronic liar, and I never believe a word you say. I figured that's what you're gonna say, so I took a couple of pictures as proof. There, I just sent over WhatsApp, but don't be too shocked when you see them. Okay, got them now. What? I can't believe what I'm seeing. I mean, this guy's not even half as good looking as me. Okay, maybe she's cheating on me, but how do you know the kid is not my son? Well, I followed them and eavesdropped on their conversation. Sadie said that after she and her boyfriend swindled you out of a lot of money, they would go far away and start a new life together with their child, Connor. I also recorded the conversation on tape, and I can send it to you if you'd like to hear it. Enough! I knew that I could never put my trust in any woman because they all betray me in the end. I'll call Sadie and have a serious talk with her about this. When Alex got home, he found out that Sadie had already packed her things and long gone before he could even realize it. He desperately texted and called her numerous times, but all he received was just a dead silence. Well, that's what they always call the taste of betrayal, I guess. After one failed attempt, after another to get in touch with Sadie, Alex changed his target and tried to convince me to get back together with him. He said that he'd made a huge mistake and that he would do anything to redeem himself. For nearly two months, he constantly showed up at my doorstep, asking me to let him in so he could make amends for his sins. However, I already knew what kind of person he is. I learned about a harsh but valuable lesson from my previous marriage with Alex, and I'm not gonna let him take control of my life again. Not getting what he wants, Alex tried to stir up the trouble and wreck my parents' house. Eventually, my neighbors called the police to report Alex for disturbing the peace. I could have also taken legal action against him for trashing my parents' house, but I decided to let it go. Sebastian and I are living our best lives. We're spending so much quality time together, bonding as mother and son. I'm so proud to be able to accompany him step by step on his journey of growth. We've discovered that he has many hidden talents, such as dancing, painting, and modeling. But his most important talent is his ability to make everyone happy and spread the positive energy.